finally I am obsessed with a game again. All I'm playing right now is Core Keeper. It's a mining, crafting, exploration, action RPG by Pugstorm out on all platforms. Released back in August this year. And Core Keeper has been on early access on Steam for two years, but now finally it has been released for the Nintendo Switch. Thank you so much to Fireshine Games for sponsoring this video. You can get Core Keeper right now 25% off on the Nintendo eShop. Click my link down below to purchase the game. I am so impressed with this game. I cannot believe why I haven't seen this game before. No one has told me about this game. This has absolutely passed me by. It is such a well-made and fun game to play. I've already been playing it a ton multiplayer with neighbor Stefan. I actually bought the game for him. Also, I bought it again on PlayStation 5. So I'm playing it both on the Switch and PS5 and I'm multiplayering this with neighbor Stefan every single evening right now. I am quite literally obsessed. It is so much fun to play and you can play together with up to eight people. Also playing alone is so much fun. I am grinding a lot every single evening, waiting for neighbor Stefan to come online and then we're doing the bosses together. Now let's go over the story. The story is minimal on purpose, actually. You're just dropped into this world. Well, you're sort of isekai'd to this place underground with little to no explanation, basically left on your own. This is how the game starts. And I'm gonna let you know that I was so confused in the beginning. The game holds no one's hand. I had to figure out everything for myself. Also, I went into this game blind, which I do recommend that you do. And I feel like the developers intended this to be the initial gameplay experience, that you are supposed to experiment a lot and try to figure out things on your own before you end up Googling it. Try to not Google the solutions. Try to read on every item. It is a part of the experience, trust me. You're on your own and you have to go through some trial and error. And the more you figure out things, the more the game is gonna open up to you and be better and better. So enjoy the confusion while it lasts. Because sooner rather than later, you're gonna be ripping apart this underground, building your master base, taking down a ton of bosses and having a ton of fun online with your friends. Looking back in hindsight, in the opening hours, I was actually scared and it was an exciting time because it's dark. You don't even have your lantern in the beginning. You gotta put torches all over the place to see your surroundings. It kind of left an impression on me. I was lost with what to do because again, like I said, core keeper holds no hands. The game doesn't really tell you much. Do you see this core? That is the core that you're gonna be keeping. This thing is what the game is primarily about. And you will soon enough figure out more about it as you're taking down bosses and placing some of the gems on these statues. There's also a fast traveling portal at this location, so it makes sense that you start building your base close to the core. which I feel like takes us to gameplay. I want to primarily call this game an exploration, boss rushing, sandbox game. Because exploring is what you're gonna do a lot of the time in this game. The world is absolutely massive in scale, with several different biomes, secrets, materials, chests, enemies, and a ton of bosses. I feel like I'm never gonna know what I come across and discover next. I am continually impressed with the amount of things to do craft and collect. Now, combat has good complexity to it with melee weapons, ranged weapons, pets, and magic. I have upgraded my pickaxe to the point where I feel like I can do a lot of melee damage even just with my pickaxe. But I gotta say, my favorite weapon type is just ranged weapons. Right now, I'm walking around with uh, an iron bow. Before that, the slingshot was my go-to in the early hours of the game. I'm already more than 20 hours into the game. And there was my cat. Okay, so everything that you do in Core Keeper has some sort of progression system. You can level up within your running, range combat, melee, mining, cooking, fishing, all of these skills you can level up. And also every single skill has a skill tree. This is how you build up your character and this is what I'm working towards. The game is actually awarding you for doing a lot of different things. I mean, who would have thought that I got neighbor Stefan to do fishing? But once he saw that he could level up in fishing, he was fishing. And cooking. Oh my god. 
Now when it comes to armor, uh, the bosses drops a lot of different armors, okay? And I actually went into the creative, I think it's called creative mode in this game, just to see in the catalog the amount of gear and the amount of items, and it is simply impressive how many things there are in this game. A ton of armor, weapons, materials, pets. Oh, and that brings me to pets. You can actually also hatch eggs collect a bunch of different pets and they are gonna fight for you and also the pets has their own individual skill tree. I mean, this game has it all, doesn't it? Now, when it comes to the bosses, they are a bit scary to begin with. And also it depends on if you're playing on hard, normal or casual. Like for example, first time I came across the worm boss, that was such an exciting moment. I was like minding my own business, digging this tunnel and you know, trying to find a bit of ore to bring back to my base. And I see this huge worm and I'm running home. I was not prepared at that point anyways, but they are exciting, the bosses I mean. This game has also a ton of bosses. I think I read online 17 bosses and they're all unique. There's a lot of tactics involved in both trying to find them, that's one thing, summoning them even, and then the tactics to actually defeat them. They are impressive, they are hard and they are a ton of fun to take down. The amount of items is insane. So you will very early on have to create some sort of chest slash storage system that works for you so that when your bags are full, when you're out adventuring, you can easily with a hit of a button, quick stack your items in your bag into all of the correct chests. You're gonna have a system for this. Item management is a huge part of this game also. Now you can of course salvage some weapons and armor that you're not gonna use to get some good materials back. Also there are merchants later on in the game that you can sell some stuff to. The chests has like a radius to them. So I highly recommend that you have your chests near your working benches because that will automatically use items in your chests in your crafting. So once you have a proper item management system in place, your bag emptying sessions are gonna be a breeze. Now let's talk about the crafting benches. There are many, so many. So far, four different workbenches. And you have furnaces, salvage station, livestock workbench, anvils, and all the more advanced benches like the electronics table. You can actually make electrical systems. And then you have the railway forge and you can make rail systems. You can make tons of decoration items too, like furniture, make your base cozy and pretty. For example, I wanted my base to be a bit green grassy and look how good this looks looks. I mean, I'm not done, but it looks good so far. I actually replaced my floor with grass blocks. The amount of things that you can do to make your base your own, it's almost limitless. You can make your base as impressive as you want and basically then invite neighbor Stefan over to have a look. Corkkeeper has gardening and animal care too, and it is important to get materials for cooking dishes that will increase your stats and survive better when taking down bosses. Cooking is fun and simple, I kinda wanna cook it all. I have no idea how big this world is, but it is huge. Presentation. Core Keeper both looks and performs great on the Switch and it is just such a good Switch game. It's like the perfect game to have on the Switch. It's such a lightweight game too. I think it's just like 600 megabytes of size. So it's like you never have to uninstall this game ever again. I take my Switch with me to places. I play on the go and yeah, I only play my Switch in handheld. <laughs> Actually, I cannot remember the last time I docked it. The game has great colors, tons of pretty pixel art and I like how the walls sort of bounce when you're hitting them. And the star of the show are the bosses and the use of lighting. The lighting from the torches looks really nice. Casting shadows and stuff and I'm loving these bloom effects. Music is fitting, blends in very well. Same goes with sound effects. If a ton of things happen on the screen at once, however, there may be like a micro stutter, but it was so minor that it didn't affect me at all. The Switch version of this game is absolutely very good. Verdict. 
I am so glad that I got to find this game. Why had I not heard about it yet? This game is cheap too, and it's so much fun to play in multiplayer. And like the possibilities for base building alone is stellar. And I can see this game being a huge time sink where you can let your creativity go absolutely nuts. Remember that the console versions of Core Keeper has a lot of shortcuts, like you're holding down your analog stick and then you're hitting set R that is gonna automatically put down torches for you. Also like hitting down set R or set L is either gonna drop a stack or place them quickly. I highly recommend that you learn the shortcuts. They are very good. I am having a blast with Core Keeper and I think this is a must have. And I hope this helps out with spreading the knowledge of this game and that more people decide to check it out. Remember 25% off on the Switch right now with my link down below. And thank you so much to Fireshine Games for sponsoring this video. Buy it for yourself and buy it for your friends. And if you end up loving this game because of this video, you're welcome. This is one of the best games I've played this year. Actually, I put my Switch in neighbor Stefan's hands and like 10 seconds passes and he's like, I wanna get this game. Anyways, if you like this video, please hit like on it. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Maybe in Core Keeper.